last meeting? Let's see so, here. Somebody was late last meeting. Oh, it was me. I come in a little bit. Saying he's gonna be here. What? I don't remember him saying he was gonna be here. Yeah, no, he's We're waiting for one more commissioner. <laughs> okay, so we're called together our April 4th meeting uh, for the Planning Commission. If we could do roll call, Chloe. Commissioner Ruth. Here. Commissioner Newman. Here. Commissioner Christensen. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. And Chair Welch. Here, thank you. Okay, we'll do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Very good, welcome. So this meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communications, Cable TV Channel 8 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99 and is being, re being recorded to be replayed on the following Monday and Friday at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed from the city's website at www.cityofcapitola.org. Our technician tonight is Kingston Rivera and as a reminder, uh, please Place your uh, cell phones on uh, vibrate or silence if you would. And if you do happen to come and speak, uh, we ask if you would just to sign in to, uh, uh, on the podium there and speak into the mic so we can uh, understand clearly who you are and we have that for a minute. Uh, with that, we'll go on to uh, oral communications. Any additions or deletions to our agenda? No, we did um, receive a couple additional um, public comments regarding 4A that you should each have at your seats. It came in later yeah, this afternoon. Those? And there were also actually um, a few comments that came in for 5B 401 Capitola Avenue this afternoon. So both are at your okay. seats. Very good. Um, with that, we'll open this up to um, public comments. The public comment period is for those items that are not on tonight's agenda. So if you have any comments you'd like to talk to the Planning Commission tonight about items not on tonight's agenda, we'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Mm -hmm. Any takers? Okay, not seeing none, we'll, we'll move forward to uh, commission comments. No, no commissioner comments. Um, we'll go to staff comments, but I would ask maybe we're gonna introduce Sean. That's exactly okay. the comment I was gonna make. So it's a privilege for me this evening to introduce you to Sean Sasanto. He's our new assistant planner for the city. Um, Sean has been working, actually he was, we brought him in during our last recruitment to work as an intern for the city. So he's been doing a lot of mall research. He's been creating GIS maps. He's been working on our bike share in the background. So um, it was a really good opportunity to see all of his strengths. And so when the position reopened, we um, hired from within the last recruitment. So, and Sean has a degree from Humboldt State University. He grew up in Aptos, so a local, and knows the area well, so. Great, well welcome, Sean. It's good to have you, and if you're dealing with the mall, you, hopefully you're gonna be around a while, so. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. Okay, 
We'll move forward to uh, approval of our minutes, and this is for our Planning Commission special meeting on February 21st. So do I have a motion? To I move to approve the minutes. Okay, we have a motion. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that carries. Thank you. Now we'll move forward to our consent calendar. The consent calendar is uh, items that we vote with one motion. Uh, we have one item on the consent calendar there tonight at 105 Sacramento. It's for an extension of a design permit. Would we, is there anyone on the planning commission or the public that would like to? I think pull? we should pull that just so we can talk to them about this okay. letter. Then we will pull that. And uh, do we just need to have a discussion or do we need to add that to uh, the agenda just for a? Um, I just like to make sure that uh, this uh, this uh, letter gets into the minutes and every, everybody gets a chance to evaluate and comment on it. And if it, if it changes anybody's mind, we should talk about that. Okay, Katie, do you want to speak? Do you have an update? Um, so the 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 comment that came in can be added to the public comments that um, were in the meeting. It may be good just because um, they came in so late. For us to just open the public hearing we right. could give you a, a fast overview of the proposal i can okay. give you an update i did go out to the site this evening and then we can ju just to make sure everything's in place so why don't we go ahead and pull it from the consent calendar and talk about it first and then get that out of the way and then we can make a motion if we need to i think that's a good idea okay all right so <clears throat> thank you chairman welch and commissioners uh, 105 Sacramento, the applicant is requesting a one-year extension of a previously approved coastal development permit and design permit to demolish the existing residence and secondary dwelling unit and to construct a new residence and attach secondary dwelling unit with a variance for garage setbacks and driveway landscaping. Single-story residence and secondary dwelling unit are to be replaced with the two-story single-family home and the se attached secondary dwelling unit as shown here. Uh, the existing shed between the carport and residence would be removed. Here are the elevations, uh, building height 24 feet, uh, almost 11 inches, uh, total floor area ratio of 3,357 square feet. Uh, that's including the ADU in the garage. Uh, the design is a Carmel fairy tale design, uh, asymmetrical gable ends, wooden trusses, etc. cetera. Uh, secondary dwelling unit is 524 square feet. This is the detached garage. Uh, building height is just under 15 feet and it's 521 square feet with uh, design of materials to match the main structure. Uh, the variance um, for the garage setbacks uh, were granted because 105 Sacramento is a flag lot within the geologic hazard overlay zone which requires extended coastal setbacks from bluffs. Uh, there are no specific setback regulations for flag lots. Uh, the site also has large cypress trees, uh, two out of the three of which are to be preserved according to the plans. Um, and so moving the garage farther into the main portion of the lot would require significant tree impacts to root systems. And then the other variance was for driveway landscaping because with the parking setup they had to do here with the flag lot, there was not enough space for the uh, two-foot landscaping strip. And that was, that was the brief overview. Okay. And then I'll add, um, I went up to the site this evening. We did get a couple emails um, regarding uh, whether or not asbestos had been rem siding removed from the building. I went out there and in fact they were removing inside the building. There was stone, uh, an interior like faux stone wall, or maybe it was real stone, behind a <laughs> fireplace. It was creating a lot of dust, but no, none of the exterior materials from the building were be t being taken down. I did t talk with the contractor, told him the process in which he ha you have to go through for a um, demolition permit which is you have to come into the building department they'll review whether or not um, like what the what the circumstances are and then the correct environmental permits if necessary so um, at this point no asbestos has been removed and we have no documentation actually that the siding is asbestos that will be done though prior to demolition is the uh, alleged loss of one to three feet of the cliff even relevant oh so it is not just because they built in some extra space yeah. within their design originally. So it wasn't right at the 50 year setback, the design. So are there any other changed circumstances since this was or originally a approved that you're aware of? No, interior remodels don't count as um, substantial changes. And I believe the contractor is here tonight if you have any questions, but it was simply an interior faux rock wall 
behind a fireplace. And just to clarify, this is a demolition a demolition of the building, but they're just cleaning up the interior. It's not yeah. the actual demolition of the the unit. They're just cleaning up the interior. I, I believe they're pl planning on putting down new wood floors and painting. So they were just preparing and getting rid of some of the interior characteristics. There. Okay. Um, do we want to hear from the contractor, or are, you, are we ready to? Anybody like to entertain a motion? I've got all my questions answered. I'm doing a public uh, hearing. Well, here. I guess it, I guess yeah. that we could go to a full <laughs> public hearing. Okay, if we have that, since um, any more questions on staff, then we'll ask uh, the contractor to come up if you want to represent, and maybe just give some insight to what's going on. My name is Don Sanguinetti. Um, I'm a good friend of the owner, and uh, I'm just doing some some maintenance work and repainting because a tenant just moved out okay thanks to any questions for no that uh, okay answered all my issues uh, anybody else from the public that would like to speak thank you Don okay not seeing anybody we'll bring it back to the Planning Commission I'd move the approval of the extension okay we have a motion I second. second and a second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. so the motion moves forward thank you <coughs> Okay, so we will move to uh, items 5A now. This is 700A Bay Street for a conditional use permit of sale of alcohol at 700A Bay Avenue located in the commercial neighborhood. All right, thank you, Chairman Welch. <clears throat> the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for off-sale beer and wine sales at the existing Capitola Produce Market at 700A Bay Avenue in the neighborhood commercial zoning district. In the CN Zoning District, small retail businesses conducted entirely within enclosed buildings, such as neighborhood grocery stores, are principally permitted use. The application includes interior modifications to the existing neighborhood grocery store to add a seafood counter for the fish lady and a refrigerated case for beer and wine. The area of improvement is shown here in blue. The building will not be expanded, therefore architectural and site review is not required. There are 22 parking spaces in the parking lot and with no increase in the size of the structure and no intensification of use, no additional parking was required. The applicant is requesting the, the CUP to allow off-sale beer and wine sales at the existing grocery store. The applicants currently have a Type 20 off-sale beer and wine license from the Department of Alcohol uh, Beverage Control for their existing location at 2510 South Main Street in Soquel. But the applicant must have an approved CUP from the city of Capitola before the ABC will allow that Type 20 license to be used at this location. Type 20 licenses authorize the sale of beer and wine for consumption off the premises where sold, and minors are allowed on the premises. The fish lady plans to offer beer and wine in a refrigerated case next to the fish counter, shown here in red. Customers will make their selection from the case, pay at the checkout stand, and carry their purchases out. There will be no on-site consumption of beer or wine, the proposed plans are consistent with the requirements of the Type 20 license. In addition, Chief of Police Terry McManus has reviewed the application, conducted a site visit, and made findings that support the approval of the conditional use permit for a Type 20 license at 700A Bay Avenue. So staff recommends the planning mission review the application, approve application 19-0048 based on the conditions and findings for approval. Okay, thank you, Matt. Uh, any questions of staff? No, is the applicant here would like to speak? Mike, Sharon, anything you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else that would like to speak to this uh, item? Not see anyone? I'll, I, we'll come back and bring it back to the Planning Commission so and uh, entertain a motion. Uh, well, let me, I'll just say I, I'm familiar with that operation there, very well run uh, business. And I can't see that there would be any issues here at all. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to welcome the fish lady and thank her for uh, relocating to our fair city and wish, wish her all the luck in the world. <laughs> okay. Can anybody else? Yep. If we get a motion, it'd be great. Then we could really welcome her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll move approval. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion, a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Welcome to Capitol. Good <laughs> to have you. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving into uh, item B, 401 Capitola Avenue, and we have two people, I believe, have to recuse themselves. So uh, are we going to have anything uh, that 
either Ed or I are going to be needed for for the rest of this meeting? No, I do. <laughs> I do not have a manager's report for you this evening. There's so, um, just to explain, and I think this is a, something that is appropriate to do, is that I am. Um, I have to recuse myself from items B, C, and D because I have a property that is within 500 feet of those three applications. I'd like to add also that I did submit some written comment on item B, but in the interest of fairness, I made no communication with the staff and have done nothing other than the written communication that everyone can see. Okay. okay. So I have to recuse myself for the very same reasons. Okay, well, you guys have a <laughs> nice... <the> letter. <laughs> See you next month. You guys have a nice evening. <laughs> Good see you guys. That property of Depot Hill, you can just sit here and never vote. <laughs> 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 That's not on the edge. Definitely. <laughs> take care of that for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with item uh, B, 401 Capitola Avenue. And, uh, Let me wait till they're out of the room. <laughs> they're on their way out. We'll okay. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> 401 Capitola Avenue. The applicant is applying for a conditional use permit to convert an existing commercial retail building into a takeout restaurant with six seats or less and a design permit to add a new patio and trellis at 401 Capitola Avenue located within the neighborhood commercial zoning district. On June 5th, 2014, the existing commercial building was approved by the Planning Commission under permit 13-082, replacing a duplex that was located on the site. The approval included a design permit, coastal development permit, and variances for the front and rear yard setback, as well as the on-site parking requirement. The parking variance makes it a legal, non-conforming structure in terms of parking. Off-street parking facilities only need to be provided if there is an increase in capacity or an intensification of use. The previous retail use, Charlie and Company, required one parking space per 240 square feet of floor area, and a takeout food establishment with six or fewer seats has the same parking requirement. Therefore, no additional parking is required. The 1,115 square foot commercial space was previously occupied by a home decor and gift shop. The proposal is for a to-go restaurant that will sell beverages, salads, rice bowls, and iced desserts. The proposed floor plan includes a small 208 square foot shop in the front space shown in blue, a kitchen in the back, and a storage area on the second floor shown in red. The to-go restaurant use will be limited to six seats. The applicant is also proposing a new patio and trellis structure on the south side of the building, which requires a design permit. The proposed 142 square foot patio, shown here in blue, will provide an area for storage of garbage containers, shown in green. The proposed five foot by 13 foot six inch trellis will be located adjacent to the south side of the building, shown here in red, and will be 10 feet seven inches tall. The applicant is also proposing an ADA compliant path of travel from the covered porch to the new patio and trash enclosure, shown here in purple. The applicant stated at the Architecture and Site Review Committee meeting that the patio is mainly to be used for garbage, with the six seats located at tables on the covered porch and or inside the building, some of which are shown here in brown. The proposed trellis has lattice on the east and west ends to screen the view of the garbage area from Capitola Avenue and from the adjacent property to the west. Because the structure is less than 10,000 square feet, loading facilities are not required. However, public comments from the previous meeting called out the potential negative impacts of the lack of a loading zone on the site. The curb from the trestle to the fire station is currently a no parking zone uh, in the red curb shown here. Public Works Director Steve Jesberg verified that the required no parking area for the fire department ends at the white lines painted across Capitola Avenue one of which is located just before the utility pole in front of 401 Capitola Avenue. The Planning Commission can impose requirements and conditions with respect to loading locations and timing on the conditional use permit. Under Capitola Municipal Code Section 1036-170, yellow curbs allow for commercial and or passenger vehicles to load and unload freight or passengers for up to 20 minutes between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. and afterwards parking meter and time restrictions apply. Green curbs allow for 24-minute parking between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. 
If the Planning Commission recommends changing a section of the no parking zone into a loading zone space, yellow curb, or a 24 minute parking space, green curb, on the west side of Capitola Avenue, between the to-go restaurant and the trestle, uh, the required 25 foot loading zone is the yellow bar you see here, both the Public Works Department and the Central Fire Protection District can support the change. Changing the curb color would also require City Council approval. If the Planning Commission decides to add a condition that this section of the curb be changed, the Commission should clarify that the conditional use permit is contingent upon uh, the approval of the curb change from City Council. Also of consideration are the current on and off street parking options and public parking lots in the area. The building is located approximately 150 feet from the one hour free park public parking across uh, the street in front of Capitola City Hall, number one on the map here, 0.1 miles from the beach and village public parking lots behind Capitola City Hall, number two and three, and on-street metered parking is available starting at 409 Capitola Avenue, which is number four. There's also a crosswalk directly in front of the building at 401 Capitola Avenue that leads to the public parking areas around Capitola City Hall. These parking areas could be utilized for loading and unloading, especially the one hour free public parking in front of Capitola City Hall during the early morning delivery hours, and they will also provide parking for customers of the to-go restaurant. City staff has also received several public comments regarding the proximity of the new patio area to the adjacent residential building. Within the review of a CUP, the Planning Commission can impose conditions to mitigate impacts of the use. The site plan shows an existing masonry wall between the properties, but a site visit confirmed that there is no wall along the property line, just an existing fence covered in vines and a partial hedge, as you can see here on the left. And then the photo on the right, by the way, is the view from the, the residential property behind looking towards the existing building. In order to protect the adjacent residential development, the Planning Commission could require a masonry wall to be built along the 16 foot 9 inch section of the lot between the edge of the building at 401 Capitola Avenue and the trestle parcel, as shown there. Uh, there are also concerns about odors from the exhaust for the new kitchen. Planning Commission could direct staff to add an additional condition of approval requiring any external vents to be located on the rooftop towards the front of the building. The current plan set does not show the location of any exhaust systems. So with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission review the application and approve project application 19-0031 based on the conditions and findings for approval. Okay, thank you, Matt. Any questions for staff? Well, Matt, I had a question. Um, w w how about a green curb as opposed to just a yellow curb? So we have 20-minute parking throughout the village. Is that something that's an option? Uh, I didn't get a chance to run uh, that by Steve Jesper because he oh, was out okay. the last two days. Um, but we can establish that. And we, it would be the same thing that um, if we approved it, we could make that a condition mm -hmm. uh, it, based on the approval because that would have to go to city council as well. Right. And we'd get the public works director's... Um, input on that before we okay. you know, Very good. require his recommendation. Great. Okay. TJ, I do have a question. Okay. Matt, what is the, the lane width there? I don't know what it is, but I specifically asked uh, Steve Jesper that, and he said it is wide enough to have a parking space there. It says it's the same width as all the rest of the uh, Capitol Avenue where the parking is several okay. feet further down. And that down. parking spot would be right on the apex of that curve? I'm not sure exactly. I mean, go back to that image if you like. That shows, I think that shows it. <clears throat> So no, it sort of be almost right under the trestle there. Okay. South of the right. I don't have the full you map show up. Show the right. mouse. If you can. Oh, sorry. Right here. Right. Okay. Yeah, I took a look at it also because I was concerned, not just about the turn, but could they see, could a car see, see someone stepping off of, into the crosswalk yeah. in that area? So <coughs> it looks like it would be alright. Okay. Uh, no more questions for staff. Is the applicant here? Would you like to get up and share any insight? Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Amy Chang. I'm the owner of the new building at 401 Capitol Avenue. Um, so uh, I read the few comments that are saying that mostly it's the parking impact, um, but the businesses is not really relying on people directly coming to the store as people who 
uh, coming to the beach and coming to the Capitola activities. Um, so those are the people only have parkings that on the public parkings um, and, and wh wherever streets lo uh, meter parkings is available. So I, um, my store won't have any impact uh, with the parkings. Okay. Any questions? I have a, I have a question. In your, in your statement of how you intend to do your business, what you're going to serve, you mentioned you're going to do salads, and you said there will be quality meat on the salads on some of the menu opportunities. Mm -hmm. Are all those prepared in-house? Um, well, I'm planning to have uh, outside central kitchens delivery for the meat. Um, but I will start with the drinks, is those trendy um, uh, tea uh, first, and then later on add it on to the sandwich. Okay. Yeah, my concern was with preparing the meat in there because then I think that leads to the necess necessity of a grease trap. Yeah, no, not going to be preparing in okay. that side. Okay, thank you. I believe the only... Um, <laughs> cooking things for hot food were uh, under the counter convection oven and then um, what's it called an invection range um, but a very small one so th those are the only two things for, ins for heating food so there really would not be a kitchen hood or I'm not sure because that, that wasn't included in the plans but it did I think it, the building official wasn't there today so I couldn't um, verify with her what that would require in terms of ventilation so okay yeah <coughs> excuse me any other questions um. Okay, uh, Ms. Shing, that's, that's all for right now. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on this topic, this item? <clears throat> and if you could just state your name and... Good evening, everybody. There. My name is Dunn, Dunn Sylvie. I'm at 307 Panmar. I have actually two concerns. First one is if you do put on a uh, parking change or actually a parking place at that corner, that's a left-hand turn onto Fanmore, and it's actually a blind corner. It's, it's really a bad one. Um, I, I'd like you to really look at to make sure that there's enough room so that if you do put a vehicle parking spot there, whether it be green, blue, or yellow, or whatever the, the designation might be, that it really would be a safe uh, scenario because it does get a little bit jammed up in terms of traffic and as well as turning on, uh, onto Fanmore at that point. And my second thing is, is the requirement for parking is, or non-parking is six seats, I believe. Is it going to be six seats total or is it six seats in the restaurant or is it six seats in the restaurant plus a patio seating? I'm not sure. I was kind of confused in that. It's six seats total. Total. Uh, and they can, if they don't put restrictions, it can be inside, outside. But it's, um, <coughs> yeah, there, we have other to-go restaurants that um, have, have, been told they could do inside outside just as long as the number is no more than six so that's both inside and outside mm -hmm. is that right cumulative okay. yes okay thank you thanks Ms. Dunn. yes sir michael levine i'm a business owner in the adjacent trestle building as you know we have the only private parking in the neighborhood and it's already very busy um, oftentimes with people who aren't taking care of any business at the trestle building but just happen to find it convenient and pull in there so I have concerns about that and I know the other business owners in the building have concerns about that as well I don't think it's an appropriate location for a restaurant of any kind and I don't think a restaurant that's characterizing itself as a takeout that also has a patio planned is even an appropriate description so I'm opposed to it I've submitted my comments for the record as well thank you thank you we have those okay anybody else that would like to speak not see anyone I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for discussion yeah I've kind of compared this to the Avenue Cafe who generates a lot of clientele right. and I haven't seen any impact on parking in that area from that so I'm not sure if that's at least in my mind if that's a, a concern that raises the necessity to deny this permit so I'm, I'm kind of on the fence right now I'm more concerned about the, the parking spot and the safety of that parking space so I need to be 
convinced <laughs> one way or the other. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, I agree. That's, um, I think a loading zone seems more appropriate instead of a 20 minute green zone, um, just to kind of keep the flow of traffic going <laughs> around that corner. Um, I'm also, I would say that the, to address the wall and the, um, the garbage enclosure, I know that if I was a homeowner, that just to, if I was a homeowner next to that building, I would be concerned with the smells of garbage and the smells of, of um, cooking food. But I, I, she explained that they're not cooking, but I think that's something that could be talked about. <laughs> so, well, this is a time to talk. So what we would like to, is there a specific concern? Just the just the placement of the garbage enclosure. Okay, great. That garbage has to be brought out to the street for pickup. Right. Maybe it'd be more appropriate to have it towards the sidewalk instead of to the rear of the property adjacent to the homeowner back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both those are. You know, it, we run into this uh, down in the village specifically next to Zelda's. Zelda's right. But you bring up a good point with the Avenue Cafe because they have the same situation where their garbage is on site next mm -hmm. to. Uh, the structures there and uh, for me I could go either way on the the parking in in the front I I think a, I think the loading zone makes sense to allow the trucks in there I don't know how much use it would get during the day it'd be an enforcement issue if I think the loading zone makes makes a little bit of common sense but I would agree with Mr. Dunn that we'd want to concur with the public works that it's a safe place to put the parking area it seems to be out of the way but having said that the parking I think um, if if this takeout was as busy as the Avenue Cafe they would be doing very well and um, it doesn't seem seems like people find parking and, and part of that I think is proximity to um, the parking both in the upper and lower parking lot and the um, paid parking in the City Hall so do we have any uh, desires on recommendations excuse me chair welch i just wanted to uh bring a, a fact to you that if say in the future um this property they decided to either upgrade their kitchen and put vents in in the future or if they decided to sell the property it could sell as a restaurant and the next owner wouldn't have to come in so it, it, it's probably a good idea to put regulations on the venting if you want if you want to prevent, because in, in the future we can hold them to the conditional use permit of the regu of whatever requirements you put on this permit tonight. And the other thing you can consider is um, we didn't add a, a condition regarding where the outdoor seating can be. The applicant during Arkan site expressed that they wouldn't be utilizing the side patio. You can make that a condition so that the side patio closer to the home is not utilized for outdoor seating, but only the front patio area just other means of uh, protecting the residential use behind the property okay very good thanks and, and that's a good point because when we're looking at what they're going to be offering here coffee and um, tea and then the ice snow ice desserts and then rice bowls doesn't sound like a lot too much of an impact but if a new restaurant came in they may change that whole um, setup so I'm looking for some discussion or movement <laughs> here. If we just go with the loading zone, uh, will it be restricted to certain hours? I, yeah. I know you said the load, uh, the unloading and loading of, of product there can only take place during the morning hours. Mm. It's but 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. 8 a.m. to like the 20 other minute ones, yeah. loading, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then after that, it reverts to wherever the, the uh, metered parking is in the area, so to one to eight. So then it becomes regular public parking, just like down on the Esplanade? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a problem with that. <laughs> well, they're not asking for parking, and we don't have to put a loading zone. I guess um, that's something they would have to. I, I just, I have this gut feeling that that's a dangerous place to park. Okay. So if we have a loading zone there from 6 to 8, that's fine. But if it has to revert to public parking later in the day, Mm -hmm. I can't support that. Right. <coughs> so it, this is not necessarily conditioned on that parking spot. Are, so are you in favor of the project and not the parking spot? Or Yeah, I would like to see the <coughs> pr 
perhaps the garbage containers moved away from the residence in the back. They, the old Baker now it used to be the Henry residence, and uh, eliminate that loading zone and uh, require the venting to be towards the front of the building. I agree. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like uh, you're moving towards a motion of approving the project without the parking um, and the garbage containers move towards the front and the venting is something we don't know whether it's going to need venting yet or you know, I guess we can put a condition any venting needs to be in the front. Mm -hmm. On the front half of the roof. Right, and then how about seating? Would we like to talk about seating? <coughs> the seating is proposed. There's a total of six. Are they all proposed for the patio area? They've shown two Please. two tops under the um, covered patio area, but then the, they also said they were exploring potentially doing like a bar inside with a couple of stools. So I don't think that's been totally ironed out. Uh, and, the, and the space on the patio is a bit restrictive. The, um, dimensions aren't on here, but it's eight feet wide, eight feet out from the building, and then um, I believe 17, a little shy of 18 feet long lengthwise. Um, so uh, the front part here, uh, if you were to actually utilize that for walking space, would be pretty much blocked by a table. Uh, so the only place I would think they would maybe put it is under here, adjacent to the trash can. So, right. Yeah. So it almost doesn't look very, if we move the trash containment out towards the front that kind of blocks the whole side. Also, just so you know, that uh, in this space right here is the uh, gas meter. It's the, I don't think I had a picture of it, but it's very large sort of red um, gas pipe thing. So that's not actually open space where you could put the trash cans in this area. So, so they would have a couple places at the bar and then there's four seats out. So they're, they're, that gives her six seating right there. Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is whether or not you want to add a condition that the back patio section or the side patio could not be used for outdoor dining. What would it be used for, though, I guess? Is my it will, it's used for the trash enclosure. Right, and other than trash, right? It's no longer a patio. It's right. a, it's it's a trash enclosure. Trash enclosure. <laughs> okay. Which, by the way, was the first proposal, was a, a, an actual you know, stucco wall trash enclosure, but that would have actually required a variance because the building required a variance to be in the rear setback and that structure would have required another it variance. It would have been in the so, setback area. Yeah, so that's why they went with this option instead of that. I got it. Very good. So what do you think about doing away with the patio and just making it a trash enclosure? I, I'm totally good with that. I, I okay. Support that. I would support that. that. You support that in the means of a motion? <laughs> okay, so uh, I would move that the uh, applicant be approved with the conditions that the trash enclosure be moves more to the front of the building, uh, that any venting now or proposed in the future be t also in the front of the building, and uh, I guess we don't even need to include the parking space right. because that's not going to happen. So that would be my motion. Okay, and I'll just make a point of clarification that the venting would be on the front half of the roof or the sides of the building. We would not want, we wouldn't want the vents on the front facade. Yeah, of the blowing out on the sidewalk. <laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Very good. And you, are you ready to support his motion? We were, we have a limited group here, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and do a roll call for a vote. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Chair Welch? Aye. Great. Good, thank you. It looks like that passes. So thank you. And you can, uh, I guess, work with on staff just to follow up on all those little details. So thank you. Okay, that will move us to uh, item C, 322 Capitola Avenue. Another discussion about parking, it looks like. <laughs> <coughs> the applicant is outside. Yeah. So. Sean's going to go bring them in.
Okay. Yeah. All right. So item 5C, uh, 322 Capitola Avenue. The applicant is proposing a 1,999 square foot, two story single family residence at 322 Capitola Avenue in the Central Village Zoning District and requesting a variance to the off site parking requirement. Currently, 322 Capitola Avenue is a vacant lot, one of only two such developable lots in the Central Village neighborhood. Here's the proposed site plan with the lot lines in blue and the proposed house footprint in red. And the proposed west elevation. The exterior design of the proposed single family residence features stucco siding on the first floor, board and batten siding on the second story, a second story deck overlooks Capitola Avenue and extends over the entryway, creating a partially covered porch. The deck railing has tempered glass and metal guardrails. The gable roof with round windows at the gable ends on the east and west elevations adds to the Capitola feel of the home. Here's the east elevation, north elevation, and south elevation. After meeting with the applicants, reviewing the facts, and exploring multiple options for parking, staff recommended that if the applicant was going to request a variance to the required off-site parking, they design a structure that did not exceed 2,000 square feet, which is the largest structure that can be built with the smallest parking requirement of two spaces, as shown here. The proposed residence, as I mentioned, is 1,999 square feet. Just below the cutoff. Hmm. The applicant is seeking approval of a variance to the required off-site parking. Section 1721.120C of Capitola Municipal Code requires <coughs> new parking uses in the Central <coughs> Village Zoning District to be located outside of the village area, but within walking distance or at remote sites served by a shuttle system. This parking standard originated in Capitola's local coastal program from policy I-1 implementation B. The local coastal program includes a map, shown here, identifying the properties in the Central Village Zoning District where on-site parking is permitted. They're outlined in blue. Because 322 Capitola Avenue is not located in one of the areas where on-site parking is permitted, <coughs> the development is required to provide parking at a site outside the village area. The Central Village is an area that has a history of deficient parking capacity and limited development allowances as a result. Accommodating on-site parking would also require a variance, which the Public Works Department would not support because on-site parking at 322 Capitola Avenue would have negative impacts on the pedestrian experience and on-street parking. A new curb cut to create on-site parking for the development would result in the loss of up to two on-street parking spaces, shown here in yellow. There are limited off-site parking solutions for the applicants to utilize, and in-lieu parking fee program exists in the city of Capitola, but currently only for hotels. The applicant is also proposing to build a single family residence on 329 Cherry Avenue, shown here. However, 329 Cherry Avenue is located inside the central village and parking for 322 Capitola Avenue is required to be outside the village. So the planning commission does not have the authority to require the applicant to locate parking for 322 Capitola Avenue on that property. The site is also located within the archeological sensitivity area, shown here on this map, and in close proximity to a previously found archeological resource. Therefore, it is subject to Capitola Municipal Code Chapter 1711, Archeological and Paleontological Resources District. This chapter requires that an archeological survey report be submitted to and approved by the city, and that certain monitoring requirements be met so that if there is an archaeological resource on the site, it is handled in compliance with the municipal code and state regulations. If the Planning Commission approves the project, staff recommends that the conditions be included in the conditions of approval for the project. Those are sent out this week as additional materials. So, Planning Commission has several options in considering the variance request. Option one, grant the variance to the off-site parking requirement and allow the single family home to be built with no parking. Future residents would receive passes through the Capitola Parking Permit Program. Option two, deny the variance and require that the applicant provide off-site parking. Within this option, the applicant would be required to provide parking for 322 Capitola Avenue off-site. Option three, grant a variance to allow on-site parking and require the applicant to provide parking on-site. Within this option, up to two on-street parking spaces would be removed and a new curb cut would be introduced along a heavily traveled sidewalk. 
or option four, continue the application and recommend city council consider allowing new residential development to participate in the in-lieu parking fee program. An in-lieu parking program, as I mentioned, exists, but is limited to hotel development. Staff recommends option two, to deny the application and require the developer to provide parking off-site for the new single family home. Parking in the village is a challenge and development should not be permitted that does not provide any parking. That concludes my presentation. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on the option screen for you though, just. Great, any other challenges you could throw in there? I know. Now, now we know that why this lot sit there for a while. <laughs> Okay, any questions from staff? Not this time. <laughs> no, yeah. Any questions, Corinne? No. From staff. Is the applicant? Dennis, you always have the challenges, don't you? <laughs> I do. Yeah, this parking <coughs> just keeps plaguing me here. Um, I'm Dennis Norton. I'm the re uh, representative of the applicant. Um, Eric Barbic and uh, Jeff Putney, who are the owners of the property, who are also local residents here, um, are the owners of the property. And they purchased both these lots at the same time. <clears throat> it's been a process to get them this far because there was some question about the legality of the lots. We've proven that. Um, we worked a lot with staff to get us to where we are today. Um, this is a, a site that's very challenging. Uh, if you look what happened next door to it, that you hopefully would never allow again, that condominium developed next door uh, creates a uh, right on the property line a 27 foot straight up and down wall on the south exposure of this house. Um, there is, in reality, no entrance from the front street. Um, there's two parking spaces that have to be removed and it'd take a major cut like they did at the apartment building to do it, which they allowed there, by the way. The city allowed them to do that. Um, the corner house, and um, this is surrounded on all sides by residential, yet it's not zone residential. Why? It's kind of silly what, you know, they've allowed residential and it's been that way for years. Both these vacant lots actually have had a house on them previously and the city condemned them. They condemned those houses and they were removed. <coughs> um, the owner, that was back in the 60s, way before my time, I don't know if Mick remembers that, but there was two houses on these lots. And, and um, um, so this was part of a residential neighborhood. So we're, we're asking to put this, lot, this house back on the lot. It's finishing one of the last of a very, very few vacant lots within the city city limits of uh, particularly the, uh, the village area there is no more vacant lots um, the impact to this is minimal of taking two a, as a trade-off for, for for on street on street parking in that if you if you walk to this village 50 percent of the residential structures in the in the cv zoning do not have parking 50 percent and uh, and so this is not this is not unusual for an issue it may be it may be something that has to be dealt with in the future but there's a real problem with this with the zoning of this property and how the land use requirements work to this the other one, and, and maybe somebody can explain maybe staff can explain this to me um, it requires in this list of options it requires a variance to park your cars on the lot but it requires a variance to not park your car on the lot please help me I mean, where, where's, the, where's the window for the applicant to actually resolve this issue? It also does not allow this lot to buy into, into, uh, into the Pacific Cove lot. So if you're telling people they can't build on their, their lot or, or have cars on their lot, you have to offer some kind of solution to that. There's not one solution up here that works. There's not a solution up here that works. This should, should be granted a variance to the parking as it's been done all through the village for years. Um, the impact is minimal. It needs an infill in this lot to clean it up and also um, uh, create, create a, a more of a community look. And I, I don't think anybody questions the design of the, pro of the house. I, I think it fits well there. And um, it's, again, you're, you're putting a house in that's surrounded by houses. This, can't, this could not possibly be a commercial building. And the, the only way we could be able to in reality to drive a car on there is if it was a commercial building. And that's strange, but it, it, so it, it's a catch-22. You, 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 can't, you can't drive on the lot without a variance, and you can't park off, off the lot without a variance. So one way or another, either you or the city council is gonna have to be, be in a position of, of granting a variance to this, this position. You don't give us any avenues that are realistic. I, I think there's some real, real legal problems here. And uh, I'm hoping that the planning commission can, can think long-term and correct this problem and, and move this project forward. Um, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to t answer them. The, owner, the uh, 
the builder and also the owners are here so okay if I could help you at all great thanks any questions for Dennis? no if I didn't know better I think Dennis had been reading my notes <laughs> <laughs> very good Courtney you have any questions thank you would uh, anybody else from the uh, audience like to come in and talk about this project no, you're all as curious as I am how this is going to play out, right? Okay, I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission. And Yeah, I think it's absolutely a catch-22 situation. Uh, you know, recently we gave assurances uh, actually to, to Mr. Norton for the house on uh, Monterey Avenue for the very same reasons, right. uh, to grant a variance for that. So, yeah, I, I think the, the condition that or the requirement that you have to provide an off-site parking space it's an unattainable condition. I don't know how you would do that uh, unless you purchase property somewhere else within that area, which is not available. So yeah, I would support option one, but I would also support option four uh, in addition so we can uh, eliminate this problem in the future. Okay, Courtney? Um. This property with relation to the other parcel, I know that, that there was some talk of you can provide, I guess this would be a question to staff, you can provide parking off-site as in the other parcel that they own. Is that right? That is you can't make them do it. Right. Um, <laughs> but if they volunteered to provide a spot there, that could be allowed with, with a variance. Um, has that been considered by the, by the applicant? Sorry, didn't mean <laughs> it, it, it has been considered it has been successful scout. It's a legal nightmare. Is it? Can you imagine owning a house and somebody else parking in your house? Mm -hmm. You just you you could create split a parcel of that lot off just for a parking spot. Mm -hmm. um, you could do that. It destroys the other the other lot. And, but you cannot combine somebody else's parking in your garage. And I, I'm sure that insurance companies and lenders really would <laughs> you know speak down on that. Thank you. So, but Dennis, just real quick, um, the requirements are not for covered parking for that house. It would be for it could be to uncovered parking. Um, no, I'm t I'm sorry. That's for the house that's on the lot, right? So I guess it would have to still requires one covered. So either way, it requires a, a variance on even doing that. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, yeah, I've I've looked at this and it's it's just we 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 just had this uh, for those in the audience we just had this conundrum uh, at our last meeting and Dennis brought it to us it's another village property that um, our policy our code does not allow parking on the property uh, and it states it has to be off the property so we kind of tied our hands here with with this one through the city. So uh, either way, we're get, we need to decide at some point we're going to have to either have a variance to um, allow this building to, uh, this home to be built. So I guess I would entertain any discussion or motions. Mick has mentioned uh, he would go for option one, option four. Option four. Um, well, option four, I would just strike the continue the application, but just recommend to the council. Okay. And... Um, <coughs> And that in lieu program is a is kind of an issue in its itself the way it's been worded it with the uh, the hotel so they would be granting a another variant. I'd almost like it almost makes the uh, issue get a little bit deeper. But Courtney, do you have any um, uh, wishes or not at this time? So for me, I would uh, I would almost rather go with option one. We give um, we give the people in the village two parking permits if it's a uh, if they live there. To me, it almost allows a a, a better process, fairer process. I, I think by asking them to go to the city council with item four, it's very likely could get kicked back, and we're going to be back. To square one trying to, to figure out how what we're going to do because they've kind of tied their hands at the city council with that in lieu program being for hotels specifically um, I know at some point they were talking about no onesie twosies was the discussion about <coughs> giving the permits out um, but maybe they do three or four 
for the smaller hotels and I see staff have this because you have any insight to the in lieu or oh for in lieu if it went back to City Council to discuss they would also need to relook at their policy so it would take some time to uh, consider that option and then I was going to say as you work through the options whichever you choose we should make sure that tonight we get some clear of uh, it if the application is passed findings for the unique circumstances right. and very good okay so do we have a specific direction we're moving with the motion and I guess what staff is asking if we're going to grant a variance that we need to be specific so it doesn't grant any special privilege to this home that those uh, other in the area may have are there any other conditions I'm looking at the staff report but I don't see any other conditions on them. Uh, they are an attachment since we recommended denial the uh, conditions and oh, that's are listed as an yeah. attachment well, so there's <coughs> 20 something on there and there's the archaeological the archaeological yeah, yeah the, I have that well. here okay well I'm just trying to think how should we word this motion then we grant approval with uh, granting the variance with option one uh, and uh, direct staff that the city council consider allowing new residential development as an option for without the continuing the application and uh, that this is not a grant of special privilege what else do we need? An archaeological. And then we need to add the archaeological. Oh, and the form. archaeological and paleontological study. And so make variance findings. Sorry, that's the last component. Is that in the way we worded it in the attachment was that the Planning Commission would establish what those special circumstances are related to the lot and why it did not uh, constitute a grant of a special privilege. So you don't want those, you want those spelled out in the motion? Or, or we can put them together and you can approve them during the minutes. I think one finding is definitely that it's the last vacant lot that doesn't have any parking associated with, with it or a curb cut. So that's. Well, and I, I think also we could, a finding is that we state that they can't have parking on site. And um, how do we make them have parking off site? We don't have to. That's the variance, that. right? Yeah, so, and I think it's consistent with other um, buildings that in the past in the village. I think it's pretty consistent with, we just had the the Monterey house last month that we're going through the same process. So I think it's consistent without adding any special privilege to them by allowing this off-street parking with the, the permit, so off-site parking. Um, I guess I just for clarification you want to add both options one and four or do we just well want to just move option with four without continuing the application mm -hmm. but just option four would be simply a recommendation to the council to consider the in lieu parking program for residential I was given direction during the zoning code update at the last hearing to bring that to City Council so it will be on their agenda okay. next week okay. so you don't have to include that in the okay. motion if you Courtney um, well continuing this application uh, costs the <coughs> the applicant any more fees along the way. Um, continuing the application would not, I if it were denied and they had to reapply in the future, then that would cost applicant more money. It would cost time, though. It, it would, would cost, yeah, it costs <coughs> time. But no, um, if you continued it, it's just billable hours by staff while they when the new design or uh, if they made any updated changes based on planning commission's recommendation but otherwise uh, no additional noticing you would just continue it to a date certain so it saves the applicant so i i just i'm, I'm a little more clarification mick yeah my motion so kind of <laughs> got <laughs> got muddled there that's all right no no i just yeah. it, the because if we give them the option to, it seems to me option one would be their choice over option two i mean option four so but i understand your concern that uh, that the city council still needs to look at this in lieu parking. Well, it sounds like what Katie said, and they already are. Yeah. Right, so maybe we could just clean up the motion a little okay, bit. Okay, so then the, the motion would be to uh, grant approval to the application with uh, the variance for the off-site parking, that it represents no special privilege uh, as this has been done with other properties in the village. And uh, 
and we don't allow but yeah we yeah. don't allow the parking there. and they're being archaeological and paleontological <laughs> whatever you say uh report done okay do we have a second that would be you yeah i know okay <laughs> so we have a motion a second and uh you want to do a roll call chloe commissioner ruth aye commissioner christensen aye chair welch aye thank you so are we all clear on what just happened mm -hmm. the, the right people are shaking their heads staff's <laughs> shaking their head the clients are very good okay so the next one may get a little easier for us now we're moving to uh, 329 cherry item d okay so the application is for a design permit for new single family residence at 329 cherry avenue in the residential overlay zone of the central village zoning district the applicant is proposing to, to construct a 2004 square foot single family residence on a vacant parcel located at 329 Cherry Avenue. The application complies with all development standards of the CV zone. Development in the Central Village residential overlay is subject to the Central Village design guidelines. And the uh, lot is pictured here. This is the proposed site plan with uh, Cherry Avenue on the left and Fanmar on the bottom. This is the proposed west elevation. Uh, there are two decks on the second story, one overlooking Cherry Avenue and one overlooking Fanmar Way. Parking is provided by <coughs> one two-car garage and one single-car garage, which are actually uh, open to each other on the inside. The garages each have wood sectional doors oriented toward Fanmar Way. There's the east elevation facing the small one-story building. <coughs> east. And here are the proposed north and south elevations. The proposed design utilizes horizontal fiber cement siding on both the first and second stories. A decorative beam and post frame the entryway on Cherry Avenue, and the second story deck directly above the front door creates a covered porch. <coughs> the composition roof is gabled and includes shingle details. Both decks are enclosed with a wood picket guardrail. The design echoes that of the adjacent homes along Cherry Avenue, which also have horizontal siding, first story covered porches, decorative posts, and in the case of 318 Cherry Avenue, a second story deck above the entry. Here are uh, two streetscapes, one at the top from Fanmar Way and the one on the bottom from Cherry Avenue. And staff recommends the Planning Commission review the application and approve project 180629 based on the conditions and findings for approval. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? No? Okay. Applicant, would you like to? So you have three parking spots for a small house and no parking spots for a large house. Surprisingly, the, the, the Cherry Avenue house requires three parking spaces. So well, I hope yeah. we're going to change that. Our new code changes that because it's driven by the floor area ratio, which we include the garage as living space. So I think in our new code, we, it, would, it wouldn't require. Wonderful change. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're paying for parking space to create parking space. Exactly. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this application. Um, we, we went, uh, our intent was just to match the historic uh, houses along Cherry Avenue. A little difficult with the one next door with the carport, but the three adjacent to that, and they all had the same amenities. They had an outside deck in the front. They had, they had a mixture of, of horizontal siding and shingles. We tried to keep with that, and that um, I think we, it'll be a good addition to that corner there. And um, um, appreciate your approval. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Dennis for you? No. This way? Any other uh, comments from the audience? Anybody would like to? No? Boy, a lot of people here, but it's quiet. <laughs> okay, well, I'll bring it back to the Planning Commission for discussion. Yeah, I would just say it's, it's rare and it's refreshing to see a plan come before us that doesn't want a variance, <laughs> yeah. require variance. Especially it's from Dennis. I'm just, <laughs> just, just saying, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> So I would support approval. Okay, we have a second. So we have a first, second. Uh, if Chloe, you want to do a roll call just since there's three of us here. <laughs> of course. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Chair Welch? Aye. Great. Great. So successful night for you folks. Very good. That concludes uh, our meeting. It actually went a little smoother than I was thought I was going to. Uh, so now we're down to the director's report. No report this evening. Wow. And uh, commissioner comments? Nope. No? Well, uh, welcome, Sean.
thank to you. the staff and uh, thank you for uh, participating tonight and we will see you in when we're in May first week of May whatever that is yes. yep. I don't remember so meeting adjourned thank you okay.